Hello everyone, this is John Sundaraj from Sloopstash. In this video, we will be discussing about the three important steps in infrastructure management. The first step is capacity planning and the second step is provisioning and the third step is deployment. In this video, we will be completely discussing on how to effectively do the capacity planning and how to effectively do provisioning and deployments as well. We will be also discussing what kind of tools that we can use on each and every single step that we are seeing here. So please watch this video without skipping till the end. Now let's discuss about the capacity planning and we will see an overview of capacity planning and how to do it exactly and perfectly. Let's assume that we are serving a production traffic of uh, 10,000 requests per minute. Uh, for that, we are using, uh, let's say we are using um, 100 servers. Let's say we are using 100 servers uh, to serve the traffic of 10,000 requests per minute. Um, assume that our customer base has increased by 1000. So if the customer base increases, obviously your traffic also increases. Let's assume your traffic increases or production workload increases by um, 10,000 requests per minute. In that scenario, mostly people used to add servers just like that by doubling it. So when the traffic is doubled, people used to just like that double the servers. But this is not the exact way to do the capacity planning and this is not exactly capacity planning. What we need to do is we need to properly derive the numbers. We need to derive the numbers. Numbers means um, it can be the number of servers or the amount of servers that we need and we can uh, say how many CPUs we want. We need to say how many, uh, how much RAM we want, how many, how much uh, storage we need. So all these numbers we need to derive uh, 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 to do a proper capacity planning. So how to derive these numbers? To derive the numbers, we need to have proper reasoning. We cannot just like that derive a number. We need to have proper reasoning. How to have a proper reasoning? We need to have proper data. So this is the only way we can uh, do uh, derive these numbers. Okay, so data means what from what kind of data we can uh, 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 derive these numbers. Basically, we may need log data. We need application performance data. We need uh, metrics data. Uh, we may need uh, database performance data and lots of data are available so what collectively we need to collect uh, we need to basically collect all these data we need to extract it and we need to process this data in order to have a proper reasoning so only by the reasoning we can derive the number so basically the reasoning is purely dependent on data analytics and uh, uh, the derivation of number is purely dependent on the reasoning behind the data analytics. So this is how we do the capacity planning. Now you may ask me a question, how to do, how to collect the data, log data, application performance data, metric data and all these kinds of data. So for that purpose, we can use uh, tools like uh, Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, which is an open source uh, Thing so that you can here with Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, we can do uh, you can do log analytics, uh, application performance analytics, metric analytics, and lots of other things, alerting and all. Uh, you can also use something called as Splunk uh, to do log analytics. You can use uh, New Relic to do application performance analytics. It's very good. Uh, we can also use uh, Grafana to do something. So lots of uh, tools are available in the market to do this data analytics in order to find up, uh, in order to do the capacity planning. So uh, we need to, so the only better way to do capacity planning is by, it's by getting a proper data and analyzing the data and we need to find a proper reasoning behind that. And only by reasoning we can derive with the number. So let's say now uh, after doing a proper uh, uh, data analysis and reasoning and derivation of numbers and now let's say for this incremented production uh, workload let's say I'm going to add 70 servers so and uh, and then I say I'm going to put uh, 16 GB RAM for uh, each server and I'm going to add 500 GB storage for each server and uh, I'm going to have uh, 8 CPU system so this is the capacity that is being uh, derived. So we need to derive. So this is the numbers. 
so this is the numbers that we derived uh, out of this analysis and reasoning and all that so this is how we do we effectively do capacity planning hope you all understood what is capacity planning and how to do it now let's move on to the second step that is provisioning now let's discuss about provisioning provisioning means provisioning of infrastructure components in the last step we have derived with this numbers uh, say 70 servers each servers uh, requires 16 gb of ram 50, 50 500 gb of storage eight cpu machines so this is the derived capacity from the capacity planning step not just stopping with the server sometimes we may also need to derive uh, the number of containers sometimes we may need to derive the network that is required sometimes we may need to derive the subnets that is required sometimes we may need to derive the storage that is required and lots of other components as well so capacity planning is not just going to stop with the servers alone so lots of components are involved in that so basically this is our uh, derived capacity and once the capacity is derived we need to ask a question where we are going to provision this capacity so uh, let's say uh, i may be using uh, azure cloud uh, i may be uh, using uh, google cloud i may be using uh, aws cloud so it is up to my choice so i can provision this uh, capacity on any kind of cloud service provider so basically the cloud service providers provide the infrastructure resources that is required to do that so uh, in while provisioning this infrastructure components like servers containers networks on these cloud service providers or even in our own data centers we need to always keep in mind that we need to do the automated provisioning we need to properly automate everything automation is very important thing while doing the infrastructure provisioning so particularly when we are going for uh, uh, AWS cloud, we can use something called as cloud formation. Cloud formation allows you to automate uh, the infrastructure resource provisioning on AWS cloud. So this is specifically uh, built for AWS cloud. Suppose if you are going for an hybrid cloud model, then you can use something called as Terraform to do the infrastructure provisioning. Terraform allows you to do provisioning in a single instant on AWS, Google, Azure, and all the other cloud service providers as well. So this is how we automate the provisioning of infrastructure components not just automating the provisioning we it also helps you to these tools helps you to manage the uh, uh, resources on your cloud uh, cloud service providers basically creating updating deleting all these things are managed by these tools so this is how we effectively do the infrastructure provisioning hope you all understood what is provisioning and how to do it now let's move on to the third step that is deployment now let's discuss about the deployments deployment is the process that falls after infrastructure provisioning deployment is a very simple process of installing configuring and managing software services on servers uh, you can manage multiple software services or else you can manage single software services across single software service across multiple servers or single server so that is what deployment is all about so now we need to ask a question where we are going to deploy so this is a very important question so we are going to deploy uh, the software services on the provisioned infrastructure in the previous section uh, or in the previous step we have provisioned multiple servers during the infrastructure provisioning so basically some fleet of servers will be for application servers and some fleet of servers will be for serving database related services so this is how people usually provision their infrastructure so once the servers are provisioned we need to ask a question how we are going to do the deployments how we are going to do the application service deployments and how we are going to do the database service deployments and all that this is the place we can use uh, this is the place where we can introduce uh, chef we can uh, also use ansible we can also use uh, salt uh, and there are lots of other uh, open source tools available but these uh, tools are the very familiar tools that is available in the market you can use chef ansible or salt uh, tool to uh, deploy your application services and database services 
on your provisioned infrastructure servers. So this is how we can effectively uh, manage deployments on the cloud platforms as well as on on-premises. Hope you all enjoyed this video very much. I believe this content is very much informative for you. Um, if you have any doubts and questions related to this specific topic, please feel free to put a comment in the comment thread so that we can try to answer your questions as soon as possible. Also feel free to share this video content with your friends and colleagues so that it could be useful for them as well. Um, thanks for watching this video. Bye-bye um, for now.